This morning's Mass is being celebrated for all those who are enrolled in our memorial fund. O oh Lord, it is you who is my portion and cup, you yourself who secure my portion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who led St. Martin of the Pours over the path of humility to heavenly glory, grant that we may so follow his radiant example in his life as to merit to be ex exalted with him in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ, I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accused and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, but my kindred according to the flesh. They are children of Israel. There is the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There is the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise, Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For you straighten the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise, Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. <coughs> With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. Praise, Praise the Lord Jesus. Jesus. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord Jesus. Jesus. Jesus went to dine at the, at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. In front of him there was a man suffering from dropsy. Jesus spoke to the scholars of the law and the Pharisees in reply, asking, Is it lawful to cure on the Sabbath or not? But they kept silent. So he took the man and, after he had healed him, dismissed him. Then he said to them, who among you, if your son or ox falls into a cistern, would not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day? But they were unable to answer his question. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the questions that Jesus answers sounds like it would be so simple for us to answer. What will we do if somebody was in trouble on the Sabbath? Will we take time to help them? The question there, the question for today, is not necessarily that as much as would we be breaking the laws? And that's what they kept so high in there, the breaking the Sabbath laws. It was not so long ago, I think, if you remember, that we had our own Sabbath laws, or when we still really do, but everybody kind of cooperated with that, didn't they? And we had things like blue laws, which allowed us not to go out and do all of these extra kinds of things. But did that ever mean that we should not show our compassion, show our help for someone else? Never. Uh, today we celebrate a saint who really, you know, exemplified that so well. 
exemplified Jesus' command to love in all circumstances, exemplified to love even when you did not feel that love. Martin de Porres, he was born of a Spanish nobleman and a poor slave girl, whether she was African American or Native American, we're not 100% sure of her race, but either way she was mixed and at that time uh, Martin's father despised him because he looked so much like the mother. And as a matter of fact, after a few years, he totally left them on their own. They were poor. They had virtually nothing at all. Eventually, Martin learned the trade of being a barber. But that's not exactly just cutting hair. Barber was also a surgeon at that time, or fell under the medical field. And he was doing that, and he had a very, very strong faith in God. And so he so very much wanted to go and be able to become one of the Dominicans. Not necessarily become a Dominican, but just to be able to stay at their place. Because there were ample rules and regulations which would have prohibited him from even entering that religious order. So he went there under the auspices of being able, I will be here, I will live here, I will do anything that you ask me, I will do all the menial things, just allow me to be here and let me, let me at least wear the robe, whether or not he officially took vows at all. And they went ahead and they did that. And so he continued to do that. And eventually they made him an almoner. An almoner is one who goes out not only begging for alms, but also being able to distribute the alms to the poor people. And eventually, because of his holiness, he was able to <coughs> join the order as a lay brother, not without a lot of riff from within and without, based on the fact that he had a mixed racial background and he was uneducated, completely uneducated as well too. But he did, he did. And a few years later, he became what's <coughs> called then the infirmarian there. Now, as the infirmarian, not only did he take care of all of the people, but he also did everything else under the sun. You know, he would clean, he would do laundry, he would cook, he would do everything possible. But his faith, God blessed him with so many different kinds of gifts that he was given. He was given gifts like he could, uh, like, like when a plague had hit, okay? And so they quarantined some of the people in the um, monastery, okay? You're not supposed to go there at all. You don't want to spread that. But if they locked the doors, then that didn't prevent Martin from going there. He could walk through the doors. And he would say something like that, you know, when he was reprimanded about how dare you be able to go and do that. He said, I didn't know that my vow of obedience superseded charity. He was listening to the gospel. He really put the gospel into practice then, too. He also had a, he, uneducated mind. He was uneducated. He had a profound intellect. Not only was, were people come to him to try to solve some of their problems, whether or not they were financial problems, marital problems, and even bishops would come to him to try to untangle some theological problems. An un uneducated man, that's who they would go to. He also had a gift for the animals, too, as so many did, too. Probably not to many people's liking. I, I, I read this one account where he could actually understand and talk to mice, of all things, mice and rats, okay? And so, uh, and he never bothered because he knew that they were hungry and he could speak to them. So he never bothered, you know, if they wanted to come and forage for what they needed, you know, if they came across mice, then that was fine. At that time, it's not like it is today where people have pets with dogs and cats. There were dogs and cats around, but they didn't keep them as like, oh, keeping your house or whatever, they're your buddy. You would have animals, but they would be feral animals and they would pretty much stay outside. Well, he, um, he also took care of animals. You know, he was able to make a, kind of like, I don't know, he's probably, a, uh, you know, like the first one in his time or whatever to set up kind of like an animal hospital for dogs and cats and caring for those who are sick. 
<coughs> he had a strong connection with Jesus in the Eucharist, and there's no question about that. It would bring him to tears every time that he would read the Gospel about the Passion, every time that he would celebrate Mass and recognize and understood exactly what was happening here. He understood the sacrifice that Jesus made, and he and nothing brought him greater pleasure than to be able to sacrifice out of love just the way that Jesus did. And he did his entire life. He did so by extending love, especially he, he went, he would give service to the rich, but he sought out those who were left as, you know, as garbage, those whom nobody cared about. That's who he focused on where his love was. And so Martin then eventually became ill and died. And uh, you know, God always gives us little miracles sometimes to acknowledge the fact of like the holiness. That's how we use our canonization process to understand where miracles are. Well, in the case of Martin, there were so many miracles. He, especially medical healing miracles, he could take, he said he had cured a cancerous tumor. There was a person who had their fingers amputated. That he, imagine that. They prayed over and their fingers grew back. He was known to be able to heal just by touching. And actually, when they exhumed his grave 25 years after he, dead, after he died, not only was, the, was his body incorrupt, there was the sweetest smell that came from his grave as well, too. All of these wonderful additions that really kind of special gifts from from uh, from uh, the Saint Martin that we uh, that we acknowledge and we see and we can't believe sometimes you know what God is able to do but with God all things are possible but at the very core of what He did was love and that's what Jesus teaches us because He regardless of what how people treated him, he was going to extend that love of Christ to others. St. Martin departs. We now turn to God with our needs and the needs of our brothers and sisters. For church leaders, may God continue to lead them in holy and faithful lives of service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all nations and people of the world, may the good news of Jesus Christ be made known to them and bring them to life in Him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those oppressed by poverty or homelessness, may God be their sustenance and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For this assembly, may the love of God which binds us to Him help us to love one another as he commands, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who have left this world in the friendship of God, may they soon rest in the company of Jesus, the angels, and all the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions, which we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Compassionate and loving Father, Hear the prayers we bring to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless you, God, forever. Watch my hands. Pray, my brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the praise and glory of the Lord's name, for our good and of all the Holy Church. Most merciful God, 
was pleased to create in St. Martin Porus the new man in your own image, the old having passed away. Graciously grant, we pray, that renewed like him, we may offer you acceptable sacrifices of conciliation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for your praise in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us the companionship. By their intercession, sure support. So that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels, with the great multitude of saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts to pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice from once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, provide the cross and resurrection, you us set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alfred, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, but with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Martin of Pours, St. Elizabeth of Hungary, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord, 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Let, us Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my world, but I will say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who are unable to be with us today or unable to receive the Eucharist at this time, will now pray a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament, and I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen, I say to you, that you who have left all and followed me will receive a hundredfold and possess eternal life. Pray. 
by the power of this sacrament, Lord, we pray, lead us always in your love. And by the example of St. Martin de Porres, and bring to fulfillment the good work you have begun in us until the day of Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you in your own priority, and do thou, Prince of Heaven, the most, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits, for all the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a good day, everyone.